Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Last time we've we have won a couple of times and we increased our win streak to eight, which we which is also of coincidentally our best ever win streak. Now I want to see if I can defeat this win streak and uh, get an even higher one. So let's see if we can do that. Let's play with a random opponent. Right now we will be playing against Autumn Willow. I will. I want the coin toss, so let's draw. Where we will be going first, and I will keep this hand. This will be an interesting uh, game. Let's start by putting down a Bitter Blade Warrior, which is a 2 slash 2 Jackal Warrior creature, which has the effect of it makes a Bitter Blade Warrior as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains death touch until the end of turn. An exalted creature won't untap during your next untap step. That's what exalted means. <coughs> He will summon a Spectral Bears, which is a free slash free bears creature, which has the effect of if Spectral Bears Bears is declared as an attacker and defending player controls no black cards, it does not untap during your next untaps phase. That's a pretty shitty card. Let's attack him with our bitter blade warrior while also exerting it. So that will increase its uh, strength and also give it death touch. So he did block our Bitter Blade Warrior with his Spectral Bears. Because I exerted my Bitter Blade Warrior, it has death touch now. So uh, and even if it didn't have death touch, it, really, it now has a power of 3, which is the same as Spectral Bears' toughness. So Spectral Bears would have died from this uh, confrontation. But my Bitter Blade Warrior will also die from this blocking, so both creatures will die. He summons a second Spectral Bears though, but uh, you know, it is what it is, we'll have to deal with that somehow. He will, he will attack us with his Spectral Bears, and now he summons a Willow Fairy, which is a 1 slash 2 fairy creature which has flying. Let's summon a Panther Warriors, which is a 6 slash 3 creature, so that we will be able to better deal with him. He, d he is attacking us with his Willow Fairy though, and because he he he, he did that, uh, and because his Willow Fairy has flying, and my Panther Warriors does not have neither flying nor reach, he cannot block it. So I'll have to let that attack pass, pass through. Now he summoned a Fairy no a fairy Noble, which is a 1 slash 2 Noble creature, which has the effect, both the effects of flying, all fairies you control get plus 0 or plus 1, and for tapping get all fairies you control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Interesting. Let's summon an elite cat warrior, which is a 2 slash 3 creature which has a forest walk, which means that if defending player has any forests in play, which he does, uh, forests, uh, elite cat warrior can't be intercepted. For its are in play regardless of whether they're tapped or untapped. Makes sense. Let's end our turn for now. Now he attacks me with uh, his Willow Fairy once again. And with his uh, Fairy Noble. Now let's... Uh, let's do it like this. Let's give our... Uh, let's give our Panther Warrior a uh, Gift of Strength. We can do this because it's Gift of Strength is an instant, so we can play it even during our, our opponent's turn. And it has the effect of target creature gets plus 3 plus 3 and gains reach until the end of turn. So because we, we would apply this on our Panther Warriors, our Panther Warriors will have reach, and with that reach he will be able to block his flying creatures, or at least one of them. So let's use this on our Panther Warriors. Ah, but I used it too late. I should have done so w w when he attacked. Well, that was a waste. Well, either way, let's just summon a Shefer Monitor, which is a 6 slash 5 lizard creature, which has the effect of uh, cycle it for f uh, 1 green mana and 3 other mana. Cycling means I get I would discard this card from my hand to draw a different card. And when you cycle Shefer Monitor, you may search your library for a basic land card or a... De de or a, a desert card, put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Do this before you draw. I will just summon it, I won't cycle it. And now let's just alpha strike him. 
He blocked our Panther Warriors with his Spectral, uh, Spectral Bears. And this would normally be enough to kill our Panther Warriors. So that sucks. He did kill our Panther Warriors. Now he's attacking me with both Willow Fairy and the uh, Fairy Noble. And now he's summoning a Nebony Rhino, which is a force level 5 uh, creature which has Trample. Which is quite unfortunate. Yeah, let's attack him once, once again with our creatures. He blocks my Shafir Monitor both with, he, with his Willow Fairy and with his Ebony Rhino. Their attacks combined is... Uh, is 6, since Willow Fairy has 2 power and Ebony Rhino has 4 power. And 6 is greater than my Shafir's Monitor 5 toughness, so uh, my Shafir Monitor will die from this confrontation. Let's uh, decide how we assign damage. I want to kill his Ebony Rhino more than his Willow Fairy, although they're both kind of annoying. We can prevent uh, my Shafir Monitor from dying though by applying Shed Weakness to him, which is an instant. And you chest the effective target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until the end of turn, you may remove a minus 1 minus 1 counter from it. So by increasing my own creature's uh, stats, it will survive this confrontation and it will be strong enough to fully kill my uh, opponent. Let's also summon a Feral Prowler, which is a once left free cat creature, which has the effect of when Feral Prowler dies, draw a card. Excellent. He keeps on attacking me with his creatures, and now he summons a Willow Fairy, which is a one slash two fairy creature with flying. So he keeps on summoning creatures with flying. We, we will have to do a lot of damage to him to completely destroy him, though. He also summons a wheel, uh, Hungry Mist, which is a 6 slash 2 Mist creature, which has the effect of during your upkeep pay 2 green, green mana or bury Hungry Mists. Now let's summon Sifter Worm, which is a 7 slash 7 Worm creature, which has the effects of Trample, and when Sifter Worm enters the battlefield, scry free, then reveal the top card of your library. You, are, you gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So let's uh, summon this. Let's rearrange our cards. Yeah, I think this is a good enough word order. Our Bramble with Behemoth will come quite handy very soon. Let's just uh, Alpha Strike him. He will have to block us with a lot of his creatures. He's blocking my Feral Prowler with, with his Willow Fairy. And he's blocking my Shefir Monitor with his Hungry Mist. Which is quite annoying. Let's summon Bramble with B no, let's summon Sifter Worm again. This is fine enough. I think this should work. Yeah, this is fine enough. Now let's Alpha Strike him once again. He will try to block me with everything he has. I will, yeah, it doesn't really matter the order that I do damage to him, as long as I manage to finish him off. He's only down to 2 health, and he only has Willow, a Willow Fairy on his side of the field. Now he's summoning another Spectral Bears, but I think he's pretty much just fucked. Well, let's summon a Bramble with Behemoth, which is a 6 slash 6 elemental creature which has Trample, which means that this creature can deal excess combat damage to, to defending player or planeswalker while attacking. And now let's just alpha strike him. He will try to block us with whatever he has, obviously, but this won't do him much good. We won, and we remove from his deck a Roots card, which is quite nice. Now let's play the last game. Remember that this is a best 2 out of 3, so we still have to win one more time to seal the deal. I will, uh, we're going second because we won last turn, so uh, he will be going first. This is a good starting hand, so I won Mulligan. Let's summon a Feral Prowler. He will summon an Arhava Constable, which is a Constable creature with 2 power, and which has the effect of Arhava Constable has toughness equal to 1, plus the total number of green creatures in play. Okay. This is fine, let's just... Uh... Yeah, let's just alpha strike him. He will block us with his Unhava Constable. But I will cast a Shed Weakness on my Feral Prowler to increase its stats so that it's strong enough to 
survive that battle and also destroy his Anhava constable. Now he casts a root on my uh, feral prowler and root has the effect of tap target creature without flying. That creature does not untap during his controller's untap phase. So this is annoying. I really hate that effect. Let's summon a giant spider which is a 2 slash 4 spider creature which has the reach which means that this creature can block creatures with flying. Let's summon this one. He summons a hungry mist, which is annoying. Let's use an ambuscade. An ambuscade is an instant which has the effect of target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equal, equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So let's use this with our giant spider to attack his hungry mist and do damage to it. Now let's alpha strike him, we did free damage to him. He summons a second hungry miss though, which is quite annoying. Let's end our turn for now. He summons a Roterotopter, which is a 0 slash 2 artifact creature, which has the effects of flying, and for paying 2 mana, it will get plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn. You cannot spend more than 4 mana in this way each turn. Let's summon a Panther Warriors, which is a 6 slash 3 creature. Now he summons a Fairy Noble. Let's summon a Scale Behemoth, which is a 6 slash 7 crocodile creature, which is hexproof, which means that this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponent controls. This is quite powerful. Now let's attack him with our Panther Warriors. He will block us with his Hungry Mist, which is unfortunate. Now he summons another Hungry Mist. Let's use our Ambuscade and our Skill Behemoth to destroy his Hungry Mist. And now let's just attack him with our Skill Behemoth. We did significant damage to him. Now he casts a Serrated Arrows, which is an artifact, and which has the effect of when Serrated Arrows comes into play, put three arrowhead counters on it. During your upkeep, bury serrated arrows if there are no arrowhead counters on it. And for tapping it, remove an arrowhead counter from serrated arrows to put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Now he cannot use this on my skill behemoth because my skill behemoth is hexproof, so that won't work on him. So he has to choose a different creature. And we will choose my giant spider for that. Let's summon another giant spider. Let's attack him for skill behemoth once again. He is almost dead. He, you, he puts another arrowhead counter on my other giant spider now. And he summons a willow priestess now. But that won't do him much good. Let's just alpha strike him. He will block us with everything he has. Just to stop that attack. But uh, it won't do him much good. He will summon another Anhavak constable as well as another spectral bears. Let's summon a query Howler, which is a 4 slash 3 camel creature, which has the effect of when query Howler enters the battlefield, for each kind of counter on target permanent, put another counter of that kind on it or remove one from it. So let's use this to remove a minus 1 minus 1 counter from our uh, giant spider to restore it to its full strength. And now let's just alpha strike him. He is constantly blocking us. I think I should use riding the dealer horse to make our creatures unblockable though. Because this is getting really annoying and I really don't want to waste my time anymore with this guy. So let's uh, cast Riding the Deal of Horse, which is a sorcery and which has the effect of any one creature gets plus two plus two and gains horsemanship. And horsemanship means that that creature will be unblockable by any creature that doesn't also have horsemanship. And since none of his creatures have horsemanship, this means that he will be unable to block that creature. So let's attack him with our skill behemoth which now has horsemanship and he won't be able to block it. And we won, that was easy. So uh, we won a Hungry Mist, a Timerian Fiends and some other cards. And that's it for today's video, thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch with me I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room that you can join, details of which you can find in the, de in the description of this video. And in the meantime thank you very much for watching and see you next time.